Yay! Okay. All right. All right. Welcome to episode three of Hot Cocoa Critics. Hi, Coco Critics. Fala la la la. <laughs> now today, um, I I'm obviously Charlene, your host, but uh, today I have somebody y'all have seen before. Brought her back from that stellar Barbie movie review we did this summer. Anna J. Ramirez. Hello, everybody. Yay. Hello, hello, hello. I'm so glad to be back. And it's the yes. holidays. Yes. Look. Just two braid comics that are going to talk about a Christmas movie that you put me on to. So, look, I'm taking if if there's something that you're confident about, we're going to discuss it. Like, if you love a movie, I have no problem watching it. I will do so. I am like fully in the Christmas spirit. Look at this. Have you have you done all of your Christmas decorations yet? This is an ornament. That's an ornament. Wow. Peppermint so hot cute. chocolate. Did you make that? I wish I did. I got this at the at-home store and they had this cute little thingy. It's going to sit somewhere. Oh, that is cute. Like by your coffee maker or whatever. Yes. You're yeah, curious. it's heavy. Bang somebody over the head that comes down the chimney that's not Santa. Boom. Your, your lights are festive. They're pretty. I like them. Thank you. I love them. So you. have you done your, have you put up your Christmas tree yet? I just put up the tree. There were no decorations yet. Though. I have not done the tree. I've done the outside. I've put uh -huh. lights outside and I put garland in the entrance and a big, beautiful wreath. And then right here, the backyard I did Looks for, good. you know, we do standing room. So I wanted yeah. a little, a little bit of Christmas here in the backyard for, for this kind of stuff. And so I've done that so far. I haven't done a tree Mm -hmm. I have this little, I think I want to get just a small tree instead of bringing out the whole big one this year. Yeah, do it. I mean, like I went Christmas tree crazy. I want to say like last year or the year before where I had like three trees. Yeah. Wow. Technically four. Cause I got like a small one. Like you're talking about, I got like a small tree that sits in my office and I went ham. And now last year I gave my original tree that I've had forever it was like my first ever Christmas tree. I gave it to my mother-in-law because um, she didn't bring a tree when she moved down this way. She moved here from Chicago like two years ago. And I'm like, hey, now you have a tree. And here's some ornaments as well. And then that left us with two trees. And now I'm thinking we might do a little more travel over the holiday season. Like we went out of town for Thanksgiving. Oh. I think my family's I mean still mad. <laughs> but you got a lot of history in. I did. Charleston was like really something. beautiful. It was, yeah, it was, yeah. you know, informative too. Yeah, I learned. You got cultural, culturalized out there. Mm -hmm. um, reignited my, my African pride. And then we wow. ate our way through Charleston. So I felt like I had Thanksgiving every single day. Yeah. They Thank don't play around. They don't play around. Um, they did advise they'll eat Tex-Mex there. So I didn't do that. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> I was like, why would I do that? Gross. Yeah. I didn't even eat the can't. barbecue. Mm -mm. You can't trust it. You come from Texas. Have you ever done that? Have you ever gone somewhere and said, because I'm from Texas, I know I'm just not going to even touch this food here? Well, I, when I travel, like, I'm very much like, I'm here for here. I want to eat the whatever the food here is. Right. So don't take me to McDonald's or something right. that is every, no, I want to eat the, you know, one time, you know, I did go on this really big Turkish vacation and there was this one point Ooh. where they took us to like a mall. And inside mm -hmm. the mall food court, there was some like fried chicken or American like Burger King or something like that. And mm -hmm. a lot of the travelers that I was with, they're like, oh, yes, finally, you know, just a regular burger. And I no. was like, no. And I found like the most Turkish, classic Turkish restaurant. And I wasn't there by myself. I didn't know anything of. I was like, I want the tripe soup. The, it seems that. Oh, my God. You went, went in. I went in. I tripe went in. soup. Mm-hmm. It was good. Just delicious. Was it? Yeah. It and was then like you know milky soup. It was a what no, tell me about it. Like what's in it? Like what's it like what was it like? It was like uh 
they also specialize in like yogurt soup. So it was kind of like a yogurt. Okay. There was a, it was like a very no chunks in there. So whatever tripe they put and stuff, it's all blended, and it had some oh. like chili oil sprinkled on top. It was delicious, very good. And you got that at the mall in Turkey? At the mall, at one of the malls there in Turkey. So then you know then that that was probably like, if you thought that was really good, that was probably like the floor of like how good it could be. Like if you had gone off base to like a standalone family owned restaurant, probably like in some deep, dark, like alley somewhere that you would have got like the best tripe soup that you've ever tasted probably. Yeah. And that was really, and it was a really nice restaurant with like white table linen. It was very like, like everything in Turkey is like real nice. Should I add it to my list? Should I add Turkey to my list? I highly recommend it. Everybody's good looking. Everybody. And you're constantly clean. Like there's all y'all, there's always a faucet running. There's always a place to wash your hands, whatever, you know, everything's wow. very clean, clean, clean. And hmm. it's just beautiful. Everybody's hot. All the food is good. Like the food is like royalty, like just like food. Yeah. Beautiful things that you could tell every single little dish, no matter how small was like a big production. Because I think Turkey is one of those countries that actually designs their dishes for their food. Yeah. I know Morocco does it too. Like there's certain foods, I can't think of the name right now, but like there's a, there's a food that I like that I get all the time from this Mediterranean restaurant. That's of course, tahine, no, tagine. 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 And it comes in in its own like clay pot that you have to, Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, but in, yeah. and it, of course, in Morocco, it's even more exotic. It's got like the top on it with the little chimney. Yeah, in Turkey they have the same thing, but they call it kebab in pot. But I don't know what the mm. Turkish name is, but it was like, uh, it was a pot with the meat inside. It was delicious. And yeah. You have to like break open the top with a sword, like. What? You have sold me Turkey, dude. It's bomb. The country, not the, not the food. Group. And they have, um, you know, palaces and stuff. And there's always like a mountain with a castle on top. And there's Roman artifacts. Oh, my god! You get to visit the Virgin Mary's house. And the city of Troy. Um, the movie that Anna recommended to me last week when we were on another show together, it's called Santa Games. Santa Games yeah. with starring Faison Love. He's a comedian we all know from like movies like I mean, most he's recently, on elf. he's on what? He's an elf. He was the manager. Oh yeah, he's an elf. He's in Couples Retreat with uh, Vince Vaughn. That's kind of an older movie. He ah, we all know him from Big Friday. Worm. Yeah. Big Worm from Friday. I think that's how we all know him. So, um, I'm gonna let Anna. I'm gonna let you kick it off because I <laughs> first started watching this movie. It's on. It's on Hulu now. And I was like, what does Anna have me watching this movie about this black Santa and this black mall? And I just immediately was tickled pink. So anyways, you tell me um, how you want to like roll this movie out and what you thought of it. Let's do it that way. Well, I had had seen it last year, but I guess I had kind of had kind of forgotten about it. And Mm -hmm. Hulu always has like Hulu holiday edition or whatever. And, you know, so I clicked on that because I was going to start to organize the house or do whatever around the yeah. house. And I just like to have holiday movies on in the background while I do stuff now. Mm-hmm. And because it's holidays. And so I was, <laughs> and the first person that came up uh, was Phase on Love. And I was like, oh my God, is that Phase on Love? And I just opened for him like a month ago wow. at the ski. Yes. Wow. He let me do five minutes. Yeah. That, now that is cool. Yeah, and yeah, Keisha Hunt was his um, opener, and she was really cool. She's from Houston, she's good. yeah, and she's hilarious. And you know, she, she you know, they kindly let me um, go on. I was working the show; I was helping with the like audience and stuff, and seating and that kind of stuff at the club. 
And he was like, yeah, she could go on. And he, uh, after the show, when he was already leaving, him and Keisha were in the car, were in the parking lot, and he, they drive up, and they're like, hey, Anna, you were like, so funny and stuff. So when I saw, when I clicked on the Hulu thing, and the first person that I saw was Faison, I was like, click. Yes. I, was, yes. I totally had forgotten about that movie from last year. So I watched it again, and, you know, and of course, it's, you know, it's a really funny movie, and I just, it's so... um heartwarming you know because usually he plays a yeah. character that's a very like you know mean character you better have my mm -hmm. money or you know very like you know he's the manager at macy's and who did that boyfriend you know he's usually very that guy <laughs> yeah and and this one he was a different character he was you know pulling more on the heartstrings and stuff so it, it was fun to watch the movie that's a good point well, because i i think that was okay this is like the second movie i've watched this season that the main character usually plays like a rougher, a rougher character. And I'm seeing like a softer side and my brain is like trying to catch up. And I think you just pieced together for me. Cause I was like, wait, so he's like a night, he's like a big old teddy bear in this movie. Yeah. Hmm. He still kind of has a little bit of that edge yeah. to him a little bit, but it's just cause he's, you know, he's phasing himself out of the mall and those kinds of things. So yeah, let's talk about the movie. What'd you think? Yeah, I mean, okay, first of all, I love the fact that he was a Black Santa in a Black mall. I thought that was a very funny, like, first of all, a very real and funny backdrop all at the same time because the kids that were coming to sit on his lap and tell them what he wanted for, what they wanted for Christmas were of all races. And oh, wow. yeah, I thought that was really interesting. And I also thought the interesting twist is I'm like, well, where's the villain going to come from? wasn't his ex-con nephew who's staying with him and like starting his life over it was like the mall what what would you call manager, it like, like the general manager. manager of the mall yeah what by the way her hair was laid i was like oh my god this woman's hair let me text my hairstylist right now yeah her hair was and the she, suit was pressed everything and she was always and like the, super the assistant manager too the assistant manager he had his little short suits <laughs> He was super cute. He was adorable. He so he was like what like, he was um an aspiring fashion designer. So he was always kind of looking for opportunities to get his fashions out there. And I thought what was interesting was she put pressure on him. And this is something I wondered about. Does this happen in real life? Like, yes, he takes the pictures with the kids. But then I guess the goal is to get them to the parents to buy the pictures of the kids sitting on Santa's lap. And I definitely, I don't know about you, but I definitely have that initial picture when I was like two years old, one years old, sitting on Santa's lap, bawling, crying, screaming. And the fact that my yeah. parents paid for that picture. <laughs> and you're just, ah, I was like, ah, I like this. Get me off this man's lap. Um, and so that that the store manager, y'all, was putting pressure on uh phase on love, which his name is Santa Charles, which I thought was really funny instead of Santa Claus. It was yeah. Santa Charles, um, That's wanting him to like up his sales so that they could like meet their quota, I guess, in the photography yeah. department. I don't know. Yeah, because I guess he was taking too much time with the kids, like, you know, asking them what they wanted for Christmas mm -hmm. and, you know, getting them to speak their voice a little bit, even though even though they were super shy or maybe they weren't super shy and oh. just like, you know, letting them be kids. Like that one chubby kid that the running joke was like he would get a running start. <laughs> Like tackle Santa in the uh, Santa Santa throne. It looked like a throne. It was a big, like stately chair. Um, yeah. But yeah. So I really liked that that layout of the plot. And then when she decided he was too old and too tired, she specifically said, "You look tired and you need a break." And his wife kind of told him the same thing, but in a different way. Like we haven't been on a vacation. I'm ready to go on like a nice long vacation. And he's like, "But it's all about the kids, and I'm keeping a legacy." And then the fact that he came from what like two. He was like the third generation third black generation. Santa in that mall. It was that mall, Anna. Yeah, like okay, I think so. I yeah. think so. Yeah. Uh, well, I think he he did go by the line, and he was like, "Well, that one grandpa they didn't invite, they didn't have malls yet." But you get the idea. 
probably sitting in like what the town square <laughs> just yeah the gazebo downtown yeah i'm pretty sure that if we think it through that he probably was like there was probably civil rights movement happening there was probably tons of segregation and they had the black santa yeah. and they had the white santa and the black kids got to sit on the black santa's lap and the white kids got to sit on the white santa's lap i'm pretty sure that's how it went and i love that they didn't delve into that but if we use um our knowledge of history that's <laughs> probably that's what probably how it went down and that's how we got black santas that's how we got black santas because it was funny even in the movie he tried to say well my grandfather was santa and then my grandfather's father was santa and my grandfather's father never mind they maybe, have not, maybe not <laughs> i was like no mm -mm. yeah he was carrying sacks around of cotton okay um, but yeah, so it was, it was really cute. And then what I really liked about it was this, this running plot of the snickerdoodle cookie. Like, <laughs> Oh yeah. I just, yeah, that was a little kind of like one of those squirrel moments in the movie where they go on and on about this snickerdoodle cookie and the milk. It was like uh, like rules of etiquette. So. I agree. Oh yeah. If you take your thing out and you put your whole mouth on, like no one else can drink that. No one so, else. You've so his nephew it. who was there, because it took me a minute to figure out like why he was there. Like, did he get left? Was he divorced and had moved back, or did he lose his job? And at some point, they tell you they they make it known that he had a criminal situation and had gotten out of jail and was piecing his life together. So the most cringy thing ever is to see him drink straight out of the milk carton and put his hands in the cookie jar and put his dry lips around that milk carton. Oh, I was screaming at my house. I was like, oh, don't do it was one of those moments. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that they made that like a whole moment in the film, I was kind of like, yeah. okay. And it was like a whole brand new gallon of milk too. It was like not even like a halfway, like okay, at maybe he can go ahead and pop yeah it was yeah ruined 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 so i was so glad that he had a moment where he like checked him so they had and i would say this this movie had high cheese factor y'all like high cheese factor so number one you could definitely have like family members around watching this there's no like there's dirty no jokes or sexual mm -mm. moments or yeah. violence Mm -mm. no it's totally like and i love what you said and this is part of the reason i started this whole show was because these christmas movies that come out most of them are not meant for you to sit there with your cocoa and like watch them if, if you do sit down with your your grandma your abuela and you want to do that great good for you but it's meant like while y'all are cooking while you're cleaning while you're yeah. decorating maybe have it on in the background while you're entertaining company you can pretty much walk away from it come back and know what happened in the in-between like yeah 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 it's like it's like you can fair. be folding clothes whatever yeah yeah, completely. Yeah, you're supposed to be like decorating your Christmas tree and yeah, that type of thing. Perfecting your margaritas. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers, as an example. So, yeah, I mean, it, but this movie, I will say, <laughs> actually requires you to pay a little bit of attention because I am very guilty of like, I walked off. Like I told you yesterday, I was folding clothes and stuff. I started it on Friday. I was just really tired Friday. And uh, and so I paused it and came back to it Saturday. And I was like, okay, now what the heck did I miss? Now, why is the woman dressed as a snowman DJing? Or what? This whole time that girl was a DJ? Wait, why are we yeah. in Jamaica? Wait, why are we in Korea? Wait, what's happening? Like, I just, there were moments, if you walk away from your TV on this movie too long and come back, you're going to be like, now, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, you missed the setup of, like, the Santa games. Completely. So they do like this, what, like, what would we say? Like gladiator, Olympic yeah. style. <laughs> yeah, gorilla style team selection. Yeah, actually, yeah. let's I walk thought that was back. really cute how they did that, how you have to piece together the two pieces 
and you know, and that's how the first teams get selected. And if you didn't mm-hmm. find it too bad, so sad by like how like elimination right oh. there, boom. Oh, wait, and the elimination started before that. Remember, because when all the can okay, so back it up, back it up, back it up, because I had to rewind this three times to catch this point. The assistant in the little cute outfit who works in the mall with Santa Charles had to put out like a announcement that they were looking for a new Santa. And then right, yeah. Yeah. He put it on social media. Yes. Was he supposed to do that or not supposed to do that? I don't really get that because me too. I did they didn't really make that clear. Yeah. Like whether or not he like because Santa Charles was just kind of like hypothetically talking about it. Right. You know, whenever they had the conversation about that and yeah. and then all of a sudden it's posted. And then for some reason, I thought it was posted on a dating site, but it was more like an Instagram Me too. Site, site. They made it seem like it was a dating site, right? Because he was yeah. putting in like, certain characteristics and stuff. So that was kind of weird. Like the that was, I don't know, the bad directing or bad writing there or bad editing on their part on the this movie was very low budget very low budget look i wasn't gonna call your baby ugly but thanks it was low budget and that's the point like there is some there are gaps in the plot y'all and also they even threw in like a, a a santa challenge dance challenge where they were like rubbing their bellies and doing this and doing this and i so then so it went viral because it this influencer chick vain girl 77 or whatever picked it up and because she has like millions of followers it went she really really viral. It. she shared yeah. it right okay and she's like i'm gonna be there for the santa games and that's when like the whole mall got rushed with people wanting to be a santa yeah right from all around the world mm-hmm. right because were they all around the world or were they all in california because it was families of different ethnic and different types of people I different types of people watching online right because there was the jamaican dude there was yep. the asian family yes but and then each family sort of had like a representative that they went did. to to be in the santa games you know what? I'm going to argue that they were probably all in the same, like, city. Right. Like, they were all just, like, the city is very melting pot. Where They're they're in Houston. Yeah. Let's just say it. They're, like, in Houston, L.A., some place where you would have, like, a, mul- a melting pot of cultures. Tons um, of cultures. Tons of cultures. And so, yeah, and each one of the Santa candidates from all the different countries or families were watching back home and so they had all these like little you know sets with different family members yeah watching and cheering them on and eating their favorite foods or whatever and basically they had like all these different categories the first weed out was did you show up even dressed as santa and somewhere in this casting call a heart to heart is had with um santa charles and his nephew clyde and He's like, you gotta figure out what you want to do with your life. Just come and see me at the at the mall being Santa. You may you may catch the feels. Um, is your legacy? And he was like, nah, I'm probably not. And then somewhere during his visit, he talks to a kid. Kid gets sparkles in his eyes about him knowing Santa Charles, which inspires him to become Santa or try out. And throughout the competition, he starts to really like get competitive and decide, yeah, this is what I want to do. Um there were but some he, does get- it, he does it secretly without his uncle knowing. Oh, yeah, remember because he's mm-hmm. caught like she like the the you know Santa Charles's wife is all like oh what are you doing you know like she thought she caught him in the act of doing yeah. something yeah. but he was really trying to find a Santa like a spare Santa outfit to cover and something to cover his face. Yeah, like he was all like in the the Santa costume bins in the house and she caught him and. I mean, they had, like, a really endearing moment. Like, to your point, there was no drama, really. Excuse me, because I think in another movie, it would have been drug out more. Like, what are you doing? Are you stealing or what? She never accused him, but she just kind of was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. And sidebar, she was drop-dead gorgeous, and her hair was, like, laid, makeup. She was snatched. All of the money in this went to the fashion of the elves, the DJ, 
the manager, uh, the assistant <laughs> manager dude that uploaded the video, like, Girl. this is where the money went. This is where the money was spent on this movie because Santa Charles, that suit was from <laughs> Party City. It's bad. The other shirts for the, they were just like Iron Dawn t shirts Ooh. for the games. And the hair and makeup, the hair budget alone went to the women because Faison could have gotten cleaned up. The nephew, I needed the him nephew. to get a tighten up so bad, like a fade, like do, trim it. Do some. I was like, oh, when he becomes Santa, maybe they'll like, you know, touch him up. Like, touch him up a little bit. No. 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 And it he was looked like they picked him off off the street and they're like, here, can you act? <laughs> Say, ho, 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 you're hired. Get in the van. Yeah. I'm like, where's that moment? You know, like when a character's... Um... Yeah, when they do that makeover moment, that yeah. montage, you know. Yeah, didn't happen. You would have thought that whenever he was going in disguise, right? Like, yeah. okay, maybe put on a shirt and maybe like... A clean you one. Know, <laughs> and go to the barber. No. Ooh, I'm so glad you brought it up. I was really trying to, but I was just like, there are a lot of hard close-ups for for y'all not to have touched these guys up. Like, what in the world? Yeah. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of hard close-ups on there. Yeah, there were some hard close-ups, but I I think my favorite uh, game that they played was the cookie tasting contest. I'll be honest, that was my favorite really. One. That was be your favorite one because I of like all the, the commentary. The Mm -hmm. The commentary. I didn't like that one because, like, the cookie was clearly chocolate chip. How are you going to get that? Like, look at the cookie. I know. And so, like, the first guy on the the first person on the challenge, they didn't put a blindfold, and he still got the cookie wrong, and it was clearly, like, um, chocolate chip. So I was like, this is bull. And then, like, I guess they, like, figured it out. They're like, oh, we have to blindfold them. <laughs> and so then the other ones came up with a blindfold, and it's like, <laughs> Those cookies are Walmart cookies. I could already know. I already know which pack it is. <laughs> it's the white box. All stacked in the little white papers. I already know. You already know. I already know. So like, <laughs> come on. You know what? This is a good movie. Like to, it's almost one of those movies where you watch it for all the Easter eggs. They call it like you look for like that Starbucks cup sitting in the corner that's not supposed yeah. to be there. Yeah. That's Totally one I of those in movies. Game of Thrones, there was a Starbucks cup that came out yeah. in Game of Thrones or something, or a camera guy as well. Yeah, this is one of those movies where you look for like the boom mic or whatever to be hanging like right here, you know? Or look for. Yeah, because there were some parts with like bad lighting. Or, oh, girl, you know? yes. Or like where they repurpose a top where one lady one time is wearing the cardigan, another like a background actor is now wearing it, like stuff like that. Yeah, that's definitely. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, anybody who wasn't dressed as Santa got alleviated first. And then to your point, like all of the little games like then had like their if you got eliminated, you were eliminated, eliminated. And then it became like a final and semifinal. So um, my favorite game was the trivia game, but I didn't like how they rushed <gasps> through it. They because they were asking it. some good questions and then they just kind of went like, oh, we don't need all the questions and took them all out. Because like, they asked, like, one question. They were like, what what group did Eddie, Eddie Levert sing with? And I thought they were going to actually give the answer. And instead, to your point, they just, like, breezed through uh, it. They just went bing, bing, bing. And it was like, hey, but what were the questions? Yeah. We spent, so, okay. So what you're saying, what I hear you saying, like, we're in therapy. What I hear you saying is that they spent too much time on the cookie game. The cookie guessing they game where I they could have so. or the dancing like, oh, that was pretty terrible. They could have edited more of that down and left more trivia in. We left more trivia in, yeah. Because mm -hmm. the cookie one was fun too. Yeah. You know, if they would have all been blindfolded since the get-go, like this is the blindfolded cookie challenge, whatever. You know, yeah. I definitely missed the fact that one the beginning they were blindfold, they weren't, and then they were. I was probably stuffing things in drawers and there's no more room for them. Yeah. You know? Wow. Well, okay. <clears throat> One thing that I also look for in these movies, and I didn't tell you this in the beginning, I always forget. 
but I look for the mention of hot chocolate on any level. And the reason I do that is because like in Lifetime movies, they do this thing where in Lifetime Christmas movies, in particular, I don't know, with like Black starring actresses, they make peppermint hot chocolate like the solver of all problems. Like if you have anything going on here, have a peppermint hot chocolate. You flew in from cross country. I know you're tired, exhausted. I know what you need, a peppermint hot chocolate. And, it is, and it's like, no, she needs a bourbon on the rocks. Like who are, or put a Bailey's in it. Like this is very milk toast, guys. So yeah. because of that, I've made it my scoring system. Peppermint hot chocolates. So <laughs> instead of five stars, then we do peppermint hot chocolates. And you've been on this show before, so you know that. I'm just saying it as a reminder. I actually meant to make um, our show horchata. Rum chata. Ooh, rum chatas. Um, oh, we were talking about scoring. So what... So, oh, in the scoring system, just as a friendly reminder... We're talking about like what everything we just talked about plot, casting, if you want, if it's important, especially like if it's loaded with cast, like a, a, a na- like a studded. lot of t- thank you, girl, Ooh, star studded, um, star studded. glam, which we talked about, and th- I think did I say plot? Like the plot has to make sense, or d- if it doesn't, that's cool, but it's going to affect the scoring. Was there any like? thuggerization unnecessarily because I do look at in movies that have a lot of minority actors in it are you playing into a bunch of stereotypes like unnecessarily yeah. in a harmful way in particular um, yeah. and that's pretty much it or whatever you think you want to um, I give like it that extra. scoring system and I like how you brought that up about the unnecessarily you know making the stereotypes this movie didn't do that at all Mm-mm. and really was just about the social issues of you know finding yourself finding your purpose in life you know sometimes in our 20s we're just kind of like out there like not you know and finally you just kind of fall into something and you figure figure out that that's your calling and that's really important to hang on to and find in life yeah you know cause who are you if you're not something doing what you love you know what i mean yeah no i would agree i would agree i like the fact that even though his nephew was fresh out of institutionalization, be that county jail or actual prison, they didn't harp on that. That was not his story. His story was more like, okay, you've fallen, you've had a setback. Now, where are you going next? Who are yeah. you? Do you know who you are? Um, do you love who you who you are now? Um, yeah. What what is going to fulfill you? So I thought that was important. And I'll even say this much, since we're keeping it very real, they had a Santa from Compton, a guy that was um, from Compton who was a candidate to be Santa, and he was like more. They focused more on him being like a fitness dude, like competitive, and yeah. he was aggressive. But he was aggressive because he. He like lifts a bunch of weights and he's just a competitor and he doesn't care. He just wants, yeah, he's a competitor. I just want the trophy. Yes. Like that's he's that guy. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm glad instead of making him like where most of the time when a Compton uh person is represented there, what set you claim? Like what 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 gang are you in? Sort of a thing. Yeah. So they didn't yeah. play into that at all. He was just a bodybuilder, he was roided out. <laughs> And he was kind of cute. I was like, if he would calm down. <laughs> yeah, I and they wanted him and that girl to hook up. Were allowed to per- to participate as well, women. Yeah, yeah. The the girl that ended up being a miss uh, a miss Claus or like a girl Santa, and her and now her Santa costume. They they put a lot of budget in that because it was phenomenal. By the time. So we're yeah. just gonna spoil it for you at the end. Everybody gets to be Santa. Yeah. Should we just spoil it, Anna? Is it that everybody gets to be Santa? I thought the nephew ended up being Santa. Well, the nephew ended up being the the Santa of that mall, but then all of them got to be Santas where they're from. Where they're from, so they go back to their malls. Okay. And that's what made me think of that documentary that I told you about. And I'm going to give you the name name for real, because it's really good. 
Um, but I think they had them all posing at that mall because again, I think their budget was tight and they didn't have time to yeah. recreate multiple malls. Yeah, I do like um I like that. I like a uh, competitive stuff, you know, like I like the Dallas Cowboys cheerleading training camp. Oh yeah. That is crazy. I know. I know. Like you don't fit in the uniform, your boobs are too big. I'm sorry, you're out. Or like you'll watch them in rehearsal and they all seem like they're doing just perfect. And then they're like, they're all perfect. You, your legs, you cannot kick your leg up high enough. We told you to work on flexibility last season. You didn't do it. Even though you're a vet, you're, you're X'd out. And it's like, what? I thought she was kicking high enough. Yeah. Oh, Lord. No, you're not smiling enough. Your smiles fall. Yeah. She's like this. Anything. And they're like, it's not Any big enough. Any little thing. Any yeah, little it's not big thing. Enough. Any little yeah. thing. Yeah, it's weird. I know. It's I watch, crazy. I watch competition shows. I mean, I, I'm watching. Well, I'm watching Squid Games. I'm watching The Challenge. I'm watching Love Island games. I watch Love Island. I still need to do like a sub show to this show, just dedicated to the smut that is Love Island. Um, I don't expect anybody I know and love like yourself to sit down and watch it with me if you don't already watch it. I will I stand on that hill and die on that hill by my damn self. I don't care. <laughs> What is Love Island? Like they're on an island. Um okay. I'm gonna, let me get your score first and then I'll tell you what okay. Love Island is. We're going to I'm going to pitch I'm going to pitch a couple things to you. Um once I get your score Love Island will be one of them. Okay. okay. So, based on everything we talked about, plot um, no unnecessary thuggerization. That's what we were talking about. Like stereotypes yeah. and stuff. Um, glam. Glam. Yeah. Set, set, de set design. <laughs> what is your total score on a score of one to five of peppermint hot chocolates? What do you give Santa games, Anna? Um, I, I have to give Santa games a five. I just, you know, even though it was corny Bye. and it was low budget and all of those things, it still gave really good social commentary on the fact that, yes, we're in the black mall and yes, we're of every other ethnicity that is not white. That was the one thing, too. There's not very many white people. Even That's the true. one time they showed a white lady, she looked black. Remember that really hot mom? Oh, my gosh. She was so bench? hot. She was amazing, but I was looking at her. I was like, "Is she like a really, really light skinned black?" Because she I has know. like features. Was she mixed? I couldn't tell, and I almost felt like I'd seen her before. I'm like, "Do I know her? Have I seen her Did in something else?" Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, and then what was funny? She had a black kid and she had a white kid. Yes, and then she was really white, but with features. You know yeah. what I mean? So I was like, "Yeah, you couldn't pinpoint it on you that because she, she could have been Asian." She could have been and they some were sort like, of Filipino. And, and she was my favorite part was when she goes, well, Why don't you ask both of your dads for something? And I was like, Okay, well, way to acknowledge these kids have different fathers because we could tell. We could tell. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I totally forgot that the kids were. <laughs> And yes. I mean, this is not because me and Anna like and she have a was special totally eye. Out. Her very hair, awesome. how long was that hair? Like, it was like. It's like these bundles times, like, she had some 26 inch, like, bundles. I mean, they were curtains. She was they, banging. Yeah. She was beautiful. I mean, I'm just going to say she was probably mixed. That's what I'm going to say. She was mixed. With a lot. A With lot. A whole lot of mixed. Yeah. A lot of mixed. She's she's had Everything. a lot of mixed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I have to give it a five just because, you know, uh, Faison did give me, you know, five minutes in front of him and he liked my comedy. So I have to for sure support him because he supported me in my comedy. But I, I just like that, how they went about doing the movie, even though, you know, they there was obviously constraints or something somewhere. And, you know, maybe there was a little bit of editing that could have been like, you know, some of the things just didn't go over as well. But it's still put the message across that um, we can still have a wonderful holiday movie and be politically correct, sort of, kind of, in a way, and, and still, uh, you know, hone it into the holidays. Okay, so I'm going to say, I didn't know the background, 
because of the background, I give this movie a 3.5. 3.5. And with my calculations, that puts us at a 4.25. Okay? Okay. Which is very respectable. I mean, look, there's movies that have gotten an honorable mention, which yeah. you didn't get a score. Okay? So I would agree. Overall, the movie gave me the feel-good feeling that it's supposed to give you. It accomplished that. I actually was very happy he got to go on the vacation with his wife. I loved how it all came together. You just have to hit get your mindset that, like, there are so many high-budget, like, blockbuster-style Christmas movies coming out in these last couple of years. Reset your expectations. And I'm not... I actually have reviewed more of those this year than normal. I usually go lifetime budget, BET budget, uh, because I love an independent film. Like, yeah, this was definitely a BET type situation. Maybe Faison bought this himself, paid for it. I don't know. This is a two. He probably something. Because now BET got a budget. Tyler Perry's upped everybody's budget, so. Um, oh, Tyler yeah. Perry, yeah, he has really ranked it up, yeah. He has, like, there's a movie that I'm going to be reviewing sometime next week that is a sequel, and it is high budget. I mean, you've got Jasmine Guy in it. Oh. Yeah, he does do a star-studded movie. He does. Like, star-studded star. in celebrity. So, yeah, um. Oh my gosh. Well, you've been amazing, Anna. I, if you love Anna like I do, please follow her on Anna oh, J. Ramirez Comedy. Anna J. Yes, on Instagram. On Instagram. And then also follow me on Pop of Color Comedy on Instagram, if you don't already. Well, yeah. thank you for having me. It's always fun, you know, even though we go off on our squirrel <laughs> tangents, but that's just what we do when we get together. Don't put us in a room. We'll go off. Do on. not. Do not. Yes. Do not. Um, all right. Well, that concludes this episode of Hot Cocoa Critics. Follow la la la. <laughs> Happy holidays, everyone. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. And the we're Sparkle Sisters tonight. We are sparkles. We're in the Christmas spirit. Always.